If you've been following the Paralympic Games throughout recent years, you would have certainly heard of Teresa Perales, Spain's most decorated Paralympian, with a staggering 27 career medals to her name. From losing the use of her legs at the age of 19 to becoming a swimming legend, Teresa has inspired many along the way, and we're lucky to have her with us today. Muchas gracias. Hello, and thanks for being with us, Teresa. Where do you get your resilience, your inner strength from? The strength comes from inside. It's motivation. It's all very well being motivated by others and being told, come on, Teresa, you can do it. But when you are training, you train alone, and you don't have people cheering you on. So it's important that every one of us finds their inner strength and understands why they do things. I'm doing it because I like it, because I am passionate about it, because I love to compete, because I love to win, and I always dream about the possibility of getting onto that podium. A few years ago, you wrote a book called The Strength of a Dream, in which you talk about not only training yourself physically, but also emotionally. Can you train emotions? Of course, and in fact, it is essential, and even more so for athletes. You have to think that we dedicate four years of our life to maybe 30 seconds, which is how long one of our competitions can take. Being able to manage emotions, especially fear, stress and panic, is very difficult, and it's a job that has to be done every day for many years. There are many tools, many techniques. Everyone uses the ones that suit them, and I have been working with mine since Athens, and the truth is that I have done quite well so far, judging by the results. At 19 years old, your life changed completely, but you bounced back. What would you say to young people facing such obstacles? Well, I would tell them that they have their life ahead of them. Fortunately, they have their whole life ahead of them. I'd say they have to learn to do things in a different way. Sometimes it's very complicated, and you think that the world has ended, and that it's impossible. But well, from my experience, of course, what I can add is that nothing is impossible in this life. It's a question of will, and I've always said determination can move mountains, and it is true. My experience has led me to do things that the average person you'd meet on the street would never have thought of doing. I've pushed myself because I wanted to do so, and the wheelchair has accompanied me. Neither the wheelchair nor my disability have ever determined who I am as a person. You know, it is simply a companion that I carry on my journey and that accompanies me at all times. Why did you choose swimming? Because it was cheaper than athletics. <laughs> I really liked athletics, the speed and seeing them with their wheelchairs, these special ones made for speed, but it was much more expensive, and in the summer I had also been swimming with a life jacket and doing my first strokes. I realized I liked the feeling of floating. I liked the freedom I felt in the water when I moved. And then when I got into the pool, I said, I want to do this. I want to learn to swim. I just wanted to swim well. I didn't intend on competing, but one thing led to another. And in the end, I saw that the stopwatch was stopping earlier and earlier. And I really liked it, so I started to compete. Have you ever thought of quitting this sport? Yes, many times, many times. I've been doing this for many years. I've been competing for 24 years. So it's normal that throughout this long career, you have moments when you feel like quitting because you think, I can't, I'm not capable, this is too much for me, it's costing me too much. Even more so when you're a mother and you're training at the same time. Sometimes your professional life absorbs you too much, and there have been times when I have been tempted to quit, but all I had to do was look back and think of all the beautiful moments I have experienced whilst competing. These memories help me to say, I'm not quitting, I'm carrying on. How do you balance your family life with sport? With Google Calendar. <laughs> I always have to take into account the family calendar, extracurriculars, the school calendar, my husband's work calendar, my competitions, my training, my work calendar. Well, it's a bit complicated. It's almost like playing Tetris sometimes, but you can do it, and if you're well organized, in the end you have time for everything. 
This, this year, year you've been awarded the Princess of Asturias Award for Sports. Is that a dream come true? It is a dream come true. It seemed like I was the eternal candidate. For many years, my candidacy had been on the table, and I had never won. And this year, they finally awarded it to me. And the truth is that I was very surprised, because I didn't know this would happen. So when I received the phone call, I saw an unknown number on my mobile phone, and I knew that the jury had met and that it was the day the decision was made. So at that moment, I thought, look, at this time of the day, they must be calling the award winners. And I picked up the phone and heard, Teresa, I'm calling you from the Princess of Astoria's foundation. And then my heart was pounding. Does Teresa Perales ever lose her smile? Well, sometimes. Hardly ever, though. Or maybe when I sleep. No, but seriously, it's not worth losing your smile. It's nice to smile, and it's contagious. When you smile, the person in front of you smiles back. And in the end, it's like giving someone a present. Thank you for your time, and we'll see you in 2024 at the Paris Games. We'll always have Paris. Many thanks, Teresa. Thank you.